Welcome to our study in the book of Revelation. And today we are going to focus on Revelation chapter 12. Uh, as we start on Revelation chapter 12, I uh, just want to inform you that we have now come to the second half of the book of Revelation. Uh, verses chapters 1 to 11 uh, give us an indication of uh, uh, history of the church age and how the church would go through various difficulties and trials, but uh, uh, God's protection would be with us. And in the 12th chapter, uh, especially in verses 1 to 6, we have a recounting of some of those details where we, through this vision, we realize that uh, God's protection is guaranteed to his people. And this is uh, recounted through uh, pictures uh, in this uh, particular vision. And we ought to focus on uh, verses 1 to 6. And let me just uh, read it and explain it to you. Uh, Revelation 12 verse 1 says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. So this is a picture of uh, the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. And uh, those uh, uh, pictures there that we see, uh, the 12 uh, garland of 12 stars is actually symbolically representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, in the Old Testament, we see this picture. And if you were to look at Genesis chapter 37, that would help in the interpretation of the meaning of this uh, uh, text. So this is quite clear that it uh, refers to the nation of Israel and how uh, they were the instruments used by God to uh, fulfill his history. Then verse tw uh, 2 says, Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And so it was through the nation of Israel that uh, the Messiah was born. So the child that she is trying to give birth and the pains, the labor pains that she's going through probably refer to the difficulties and uh, persecutions and stresses that the nation of Israel experienced throughout its history from other forces and nations. And then we read in verse 3, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. This, of course, is a clear uh, picture of uh, satanic power. The dragon is a symbol of satanic power. And uh, the not only did the dragon was the red color, which is uh, possibly an indication of the blood of the saints, and seven heads and ten horns indicating uh, the power, the seven heads and horns and ten horns indicating the complete or global or universal power that the enemy exercises through the kingdoms of this world. So that is the picture that is being introduced to us. And... Uh, the woman in pain, uh, struggling to give birth, is obviously a picture of Israel uh, giving birth to the Messiah. And Jesus uh, used this symbolism in John's Gospel, chapter 16. Verse 4. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Is that a picture of the persecution of the saints? It is possible that uh, this indicates the persecution uh, not only uh, of the church in the church age, but also the persecution and difficulties during the period of the birth of Christ. You remember that not only uh, was Jesus experiencing sufferings during his earthly ministry, but even soon after he was born, 
uh, Herod had a conspiracy to destroy him, to eliminate him. He didn't know the identity of the Christ child, but he wanted to make sure that everything would be 100% uh, sure as far as his security was concerned. And he ordered the slaughter, the massacre of the innocents. So there was a persecution at the birth of Christ. And then during the three and a half year ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord, he constantly uh, encountered conflict with the Jewish religious authorities. And so this dragon standing before the woman, uh, ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born, probably is a throwback to the nativity incidents. And then verse 5 says, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Interestingly, you're shown the dragon with his power of 10 horns and seven uh, diadems. And then in contradistinction to us, to that, we are told that uh, the male child will rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. So this is a picture of the death, the crucifixion of our Lord, the resurrection victoriously, because just when the Jewish authorities, after uh, co-conspiring with the Roman authorities, the Roman Empire, to put him to death, uh, resting in the uh, misguided knowledge that they had won the victory. On the third day, lo and behold, Jesus rises from the dead and he ascends to the presence of the Father. That is what is recounted here. He was caught up to God and his throne. Then verse 6 gives us the post ascension history of the church, which is part of what we are still experiencing, uh, which says, then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 1, days. Here we have a clear picture of the church age, the life of the church. And uh, what we are told is that soon after the male child was caught up to God and to his throne, the woman. Now we have a picture not only of the Old Testament Israel, but now it is linked with the New Testament church because the transition has taken place. The Messiah has come. He has been caught up to God and to his throne. And now the woman has a dual significance, Old Testament Israel and the New Testament Israel, the people of God. And she is now uh, gone into the wilderness because during the church age, the church will suffer persecution. And the wilderness, of course, uh, reminds us of the wilderness journey of the people of Israel, how God miraculously uh, protected them, provided for them, and brought them to the promised land. So the wilderness is a place of protection. It's a place where God is hiding his church for 1260 days, symbolically speaking about the lifespan of the church or the church age, symbolically. Three and a half years, 42 months, 1260 days, same period of time, uh, referring to the period of the church age. And during that time, God is protecting his church and he has prepared a place for us. This is the wonderful story of the uh, life of the church and of uh, salvation history. Now, if you are a person who believes that uh, Revelation 12 onwards refers or Revelation 4 onwards refers to the great tribulation period, then uh, you would look at this as if it is the midpoint of the tribulation. But as I've said before, we are looking at it uh, from a, another perspective, which is also a very credible, credible perspective. And that is that uh, this refers to the whole church age. And uh, 
there is no reason uh, to believe that it does not because there may be multiple applications of uh, prophetic uh, words and uh, revelation is a prophecy. So we do know that there will be a time of great tribulation towards the end of time and end of church history. But this particular uh, account is uh, meant to show us that despite the tribulations and difficulties we face, there is one solid guarantee that God gives to the church and by extension to everyone who is a member of the body of Christ. That is that the red dragon may swipe his tail on you. Yet for all, the one who will rule the nations with a rod of iron is on the throne. He is in control. And you are in a wilderness, a place that God has prepared. And for that complete period of time, you can be sure that his protection is with you. What of an amazing assurance for us to have in this troubling and tumultuous times in history. The wilderness is a place of protection and provision by our living Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you for the assurances that you give to us through your marvelous, awe-inspiring word. Thank you for your hand upon our lives and upon the church, your people whom you will hide under the shelter of your wings. May we walk with you and be faithful to you in every situation we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord be with you and give you grace and strength to be faithful and true to him in every situation. God bless you.